The fact that women can't make a living wage playing the sport that they've grown up playing and that they're good enough to play is sad. Being grateful for what you have is extremely outdated, especially for our league, when you see how viable it is. We're asking for what makes sense right now. We work like a year and a half, approximately, to make what a guy makes in a year at the same job. And that has to stop. It just has to stop. When I was 13, I was daydreaming at the uh, Los Angeles Tennis Club, which is the hub of Southern California. I started thinking about everybody wore white shoes, white socks, white clothes, played with white balls, and everybody who played was white. I asked myself at 13, I go, where's everyone else? Like, where's everyone else? That's not right. And so I made a promise to myself that I'd fight for equality the rest of my life that day. I knew when I played Bobby Riggs, it was about social change. Title IX had just been passed the year before, so it was the first time ever that women got athletic scholarships. Before that, I didn't get an athletic scholarship. I worked two jobs, went to Cal State LA. I thought I was living large, but uh, just across town, Arthur Ashe had a full scholarship to UCLA, and Stan Smith went to SC, had a full scholarship, full ride. I don't think people realize uh, how much women still uh, struggle. I was seven years old, and I just remember a lot of kids in school saying, girls don't play hockey. At the time, they were right. I never saw another girl. Right now, there's so few role models accessible to these girls in hockey because the landscape of the game doesn't allow us to continue to play after we graduate. One more. Cool. Good. Good job. One, two. Nice. Good job. Good job. You don't always have the time and the energy to put your training first because you're trying to, you're trying to fight, you're trying to fight first. But um, I think what is more motivation when we step on the ice is to to be your best and to show your best because you're proving every single day to the world that you belong in the sport of ice hockey. We realize that 200 plus players that the leagues that we have right now they're not professional, they're not sustainable. In my opinion, we need the resources that the NHL have to help back us up. We need their infrastructure, we need their business model, we need their support. When you first enter the league, you're just concerned about playing well, <laughs> you know? You, you want to be able to establish yourself as someone that can be a veteran player, someone that can be an all-star, and those aren't really your concerns, but I think that it's important for us to also understand as the years go by and as you understand uh, your impact in the league on the court, off the court is equally, if not more, impactful. Billie Jean serves for match point. Beautiful shot, and the Wimbledon title is hers. In 1968, uh, tennis became a pro sport for both men and women. And Wimbledon, 1968, uh, Rod Labor won 2,000 pounds for winning, and I won 750 pounds. I went, I was so happy we had pro tennis. I did not realize we were going to get a different prize, but I thought we'd get the same. So then in the back of my mind, I knew that would be another uh, ongoing challenge for the future. Um, and then what happened is that tournaments uh, were being dropped for women. So there were nine of us that signed a $1 contract in 1970, and that is known as the uh, birth of women's professional tennis. We were willing to give up everything uh, so the future generations would have a chance. It took until 2007 to get equal prize money in each major. Women in the WNBA may not talk about pay because they might have initially fallen into um, this false belief that we should be grateful for what we are getting. Um, and quite frankly, I don't think that a lot of women, when I entered the league, were talking about pay um, because they may, they may have felt that it didn't make a difference whether they, they discussed how much they're getting paid, especially in comparison to the men.
hockey and all these places. They don't have anything yet. It's not right. We're trying to create opportunities for them as well, just like we did. I'm out here skating with the U16 AAA Anaheim Junior Duck Boys. Uh, they're gracious enough to let me come out to their practices twice a week. I live here because of my husband's job. He's currently on the Los Angeles Chargers, so uh, we came out here to Orange County. And not being able to make a living playing a pro sport, I am not forced to live anywhere else. While I love being with him as much as I can, I wish I was forced to live in a city which, in which a pro sports team wanted to embrace me, wanted to love me, and wanted to compensate me to be there. When we look at our sport, you know, we, we're the most successful professional women's league. Um, and you have someone like Kendall and Hillary who are looking to make things better for women in hockey and they're aspiring to have what we have. But then we also look at the women's national soccer team and the following that they have and we're looking for that. And so it's a team effort in different ways. Until women's team sports really make it so women, all the women, can make a living, there has to be a vehicle of opportunity that pays them. Sports are a microcosm of society, and because women have so much less than women's sports, it's also it's an indicator of the way the world is.